Hi guys, I just wanted to give a quick update on the tank. Uh, things are going well for the most part, uh, but there's one major development. Uh, my nitrates have gone down to zero, which is uh, a little bit shocking and unexpected. Uh, I'm gonna try to take you through all of the things that I've done with the tank over the last four months, because uh, you know, I've been having uh, nitrate issues and I've been trying to uh, figure out different ways to uh, uh, to deal with them and uh, so far uh, things were working out in terms of me being able to keep the nitrates at a manageable level around like five parts per uh, million uh, but just very very recently uh, over the last maybe week or two weeks my nitrates have gone from about five to zero undetectable uh, so uh, I'll uh, show you what has changed and I'm gonna try to uh, uh, explain why I think my nitrates went down from zero. So this is uh, <laughs> this is not science. Uh, obviously, uh, this is anecdotal evidence, but I, th I think I have some hypotheses, some ideas about uh, what caused this drop in nitrates. Uh, the glass looks really, really clean, but believe it or not, I haven't touched it in a week. Unbelievable. Normally, I would clean the glass and three. Uh, not even three days like two days later I would have to clean it again I haven't touched this class in a week and uh, you uh, uh, if you've been following you know that I did a chemical clean treatment I think maybe a month ago I'll, I'll give you the exact dates in a little bit and and for the most part the uh, I still have a few little isolated patches of re red slime uh, cyan on the back there and on the sand but it's gone and I had what appeared to be a, uh, a problem, uh, an upcoming problem with the uh, green hair uh, algae, but for the most part, the green hair algae didn't spread anywhere. The glass is looking, sorry, the rocks are looking pretty clean. You could see like one little patch of it right here. My canary wrasse is photobombing, but for the most part, the core, uh, the rocks are actually really, really clean. Uh, so I think that's a good sign. I'm a, a little bit worried that the colors on, uh, on the SBS are, are gonna start fading away with low nutrients, but I'll tell you what, how I'm dealing with this. All right, so sh let me show you what has changed. All right, so I had really high nitrates uh, around the 30th of January of this year. Uh, so 10 parts per billion, phosphates were not too bad, 0 0.025. And what brought this on is uh, I had uh, a little bit of green hair algae and I used Vibrant and Vibrant killed the algae and it exposed uh, uh, a nitrate problem. So the green hair algae was taking up the nitrates and then when the nitrates went out, when the green hair algae went away, the nitrates were in the water column. Uh, so my nitrate spike 10 parts per uh, billion and my SPS uh, lost a lot of their color. Uh, so I tried to bring the nitrate, uh, pro make the nitrate problem, uh, I tried to manage the nitrates by dosing some nopox. And actually dosing nopox worked, I, I was able to go from 10 parts per uh, million to zero. Uh, but uh, I, I got a really bad bacteria bloom and I started getting uh, lots of cyano. So uh, from that point, I decided that I just wanted to try to manage uh, nitrates and nutrients uh, in, in, uh, without, using, without resorting to chemicals. Uh, so I did three things uh, in about this, um, I think maybe the second week of February. I upgraded my skimmer from uh, uh, Bubble Magus Curve A5, which I think was undersized for my tank and my bio load, and I got a Bubble King Mini 160 skimmer. I started doing uh, weekly, uh, sorry, daily water changes. I would change that about two liters a day. And then I bought two uh, liters of Ciparax and I added them to my Fuge. Uh, and at that point, my Fuge was, I, I didn't have any macroalgae in it because I was, uh, uh, I took the macroalgae out when I started dosing Vibrant. So the fuge was empty. And so the flow rate in the fuge is really low. I'm, I'm guessing maybe, uh, oh, I, I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but it's like a trickle going into my fuge. So uh, maybe like 50 gallons a day. 
Uh, and that kind of essentially that that regiment of using the bubble king the wa uh, daily water change and the ciparax and the fuge continued for let's see about two months from february all the way to april and during that period of time my nitrates uh so they were zero uh, but i stopped using dosing nopox and they climbed up again to around 2.55 and they kind of hovered at this range between 2.5 and 5 and my phosphates went to zero so things were well, the colors on the SPS started coming back again and, and, and I was happy. But then in the, first, uh, in the first week of April and second week of April, I noticed that uh, uh, my cyano changed a little bit. It went from red slime cyano, which was declining, and then the red slime turned into green slime cyano, which increased and was taking over my sand bed and it looked really bad and it was uh, choking on some of my, my corals. So I, I wanted to intervene and I used a, a product called ChemiClean uh, for two days. And I used the ChemiClean and it killed all of the green, uh, 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 green cyano, which was great. Uh, but then I noticed that I was getting a phosphate spike. So as soon as I stopped dosing the chemicaline, so it's a, I think a two or a uh, yet yeah, 48 hour treatment, my phosphates went from zero to uh, 0.01 to 0.02 to 0.03. Uh, so while, while they were climbing, the phosphates were climbing, I wanted to do something. Uh, to control the phosphates and I, and I didn't want to uh, uh, use GFO. Uh, again, I'm trying to do things naturally, so I decided to start uh, growing Cheto, uh, Chetomorpha algae in my uh, refugium. So I got a bottle of Cheto and I added it on like the 25th of April. And I also upgraded the light, so when, when, I, had, when I had Cheto running in my refugium from uh, several months ago, I had this very, very cheap LED fixture, but I've been following BRS's uh, Fuge experiment, thank you guys. And uh, they, uh, one of the lights that worked really well is a PAR uh, 38 LED. I got it from Philips from Home Depot for like 13 bucks or something. And I put the Chato and the PAR LED 50 and I would light the Chato on uh, uh, reverse cycle. So it, the light goes on at 8 p.m. and it, uh, it goes off at 8 a.m. And so to accommodate putting the Chato in my Fuge, I had to move the Ciparax from the Refugium to into the main compartment. So now my two liters of Ciparax moved into uh, the high flow skimmer section of the reefer compartment. And lo and behold, that change, adding the Chato and moving the Ciparax, uh, quickly led to a reduction of nitrates and phosphates. So uh, nitrates, went from 5 to 2.5 and now they're zero undetectable and I've tested it several times and they're undetectable and my phosphates kind of continue to decline for a little bit and they've gone down. Uh, the Chetomorpha has actually increased when I put it in it was uh, 40 grams and uh, last I measured it which was actually on the weekend it was 55 so it, it, uh, it grew uh, it increased in mass by 15 grams uh, over uh, about a two uh, actually that was just a one week one week weight gain uh, and the tank is looking really great uh, the hair green hair algae that was going in the tank started kind of stopping and and uh, and uh, the uh, cyano that we I have a little bit of still red cyano left but it but it's not growing uh, the SBS so far haven't browned that or, or lost their color so what I think happened here, so there's two things. Uh, well, so one hypothesis is that the Ciparax uh, is, the, is the main reason my nitrates have declined and it's just, it took a bit of time for it uh, to build up that denitrifying bacteria. Uh, another hypothesis is that the Ciparax was always denitrifying, but because the flow rate to the fusium and the fusium is really small that it was doing only a very small uh, job at removing the nitrates and now that the ciparax is in the main compartment it's essentially making in contact with a much greater volume of the tank water so maybe it's actually the ciparax that uh, led to this uh, reduction in nitrates in the tank 
uh, I will say that I haven't changed my feeding regime in any way. So the inputs and, and my fish load is the same. So the nitrate input into the tank should be, uh, should be consistent, if not increasing a little bit because the fish are getting bigger. So uh, the other hypothesis is actually that the CHEDO is what caused the reduction in nitrates. And I, I think that's most likely what happened. And I'll tell you why. So we know that Ciparax in theory should denitrify, but we, we don't think that Ciparax works uh, in terms of removing phosphates. So Ciparax should influence the nitrates, but not the phosphates. Uh, Ketomorpha, on the other hand, being a macroalgae, will uptake both nitrates and phosphates. So my hypothesis is that, is that the CHEDO was actually uh, the main reason for the nitrate and phosphate reduction. Uh, so, uh, what, yeah, uh, that, that's, that's my hypothesis. Uh, I, I can't really test the hypothesis unless I actually do some kind of experiment so I could remove the Ciparax and see what happens to these parameters, or I could remove the Cheto and see what happens to these parameters. But at this point, I, I don't really want to uh, tinker too much. I, I already do enough tinkering, and, and I don't want to uh, kind of do an experiment and and, uh, and learn something at the expense of leaching all of my expensive SPS frags. So uh, where do I go from here? <laughs> it's it's a balancing act, you know. So I'm, one day is I'm trying to reduce nitrates and now I'm trying to increase them again because we know that uh, we do want to have a little bit of nitrates to keep uh, uh, the SPS uh, happy and colorful. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to try to increase my uh, feeding a little bit. And uh, so I, right now I feed one cube of uh, mysis and, uh, and, uh, and the auto feeder comes in and dispenses uh, some pellets. Uh, so I'm going to change that into uh, two cubes of mysis with the same amount of pellets and then I'm going to monitor the nitrates and phosphates and see uh, when they come up uh, again. Uh, I, th I think it's a, uh, I think I, I'm in a good place because it seems like my, uh, my system is now exporting more nitrates than are being produced. So that means that I could essentially try to be a little bit more aggressive with the feeding and get more nutrients in the tank. Okay, that's it. Thanks for listening and hope you find this helpful.